Take the 5mm dowel, lay it on the jib boon plan and mark guidelines for the octagonal section on the end using the centre finder. Carve and sand 8 flats to create a 4mm octagonal section at this end of the dowel. Place the dowel back over the jib boon drawing, cut it to length showing and mark the position on the groove near the end. Carve the groove with a sharp knife. Use the 2x4mm wood supplied in this stage to form the octagonal section. The technique is the same as used to construct the yards. Rotate the boom by 90 degrees and drill two 1.5mm holes at the opposite end. Taper the dolphin striker from 4mm to 3mm and drill the four 1mm holes in the thinner end. Assemble the bowsprit, jib boom and bowsprit cap as shown.
Once you are happy with the fit, glue the parts together. When the glue is fully set, cut the excess off the bell sprit and sand and the end smooth. Touch up the end with the bell sprit with walnut stain. Form three U-shaped straps from the brass wire by wrapping it around the dolphin striker. Cut the legs back to about 7mm long. Drill 3.7mm holes in the bow sprit cap on each side of the dolphin striker, about 3mm deep. Be careful not to drill all the way through the bow sprit cap, then glue the brass straps in position with super glue. Slide the figure 8 shaped boom joining rings onto each end of the jib boom and then slide the flying jib boom in place. Drill 0.7mm holes in the bell sprit and the bell sprit cap and glue in brass eye bolts as shown. If you are painting your model, paint the lower section of the bow sprit yellow ochre and paint everything else black. Rigging the bow sprite. The blocks you need to do this were provided with stage 88. Carefully follow steps 1 and 2 on page 499 and 3 up to step 10 on page 500.
Fitting the first coronade. There are two coronades on Victory's foredeck. You assemble the first of them in stages three and four. Carefully follow steps one all the way to steps seven for the fitting of the coronades. Make two pairs of shot garlands from 3x3mm wood with 1.5mm diameter holes and then make two pairs of bulwark pin rails from 2x5mm woods and paint them black. Glue the longer ones to the shot garland on the deck and glue the shorter bulwark pin rails near the end of the bulwarks. Glue the pin rails into the holes in the main mast gratings. Temporarily place an offcut of 3x3mm wood in the slots to make sure the slots are straight and square. When the glue is dry, remove the temporary strip and glue the longest of the three pin rails in place with super glue.
Repeat the process to fit the two pin rails by the foremast. Note that the posts are fitted against the outside of the gratings in line with the end frames. the belaying pins black and glue them into place. Make the stag horns cut 16mm lengths of 2x5mm wood, scallop up the corners by cutting them off at 45 degrees, with a knife then sanding the corners concave using a piece of sandpaper. Then mark the position of the two holes one third and two thirds of the way along and a 3.5mm from the edge. Drill 1.5mm holes at an angle of about 45 degrees. Insert about 10mm or 1.5mm square wood, sand the corners off one end of the wood to make it easy to insert. Glue it in position, cut the bottom flush and then add a second piece of wood. Who has set, cut the strips parallel with the base. Stain these dark oak or paint them black. Victory's trophy of arms includes numerous small details. Painting them in colour gives an excellent finish but takes some time to do and needs a steady hand so you may prefer to paint the entire cast in gold. Use superglue to fix the trophy to the top of the stern as shown. Take a piece of 1.5mm square wood supplied with stage 83 and curve it to fit under the trophy, ending just before the last window on each side. Bend a piece of 1.5mm square wood to a tight curve as shown. Trim the ends to fit against the end of the curved strip and the top of the uppermost decorative scroll. Repeat to make a matching trim for the other side. Stain these pieces walnut or paint them black and glue them into position. Carefully follow steps 1 to 7 on page 507 for lining the gallery.